evening all and welcome to an update on a tutorial on how to keep a basic amount of items inside a storage building uh, i'm revisiting this topic because logic has been changed in factory town and uh, i feel like it needs to be recovered because some of the processes to do it have changed so so let's start off with the absolute basics to keep a basic amount of storage in a barn when you're using a single item or works with with two different types of items uh, quite simple, the easiest way is to set the storage setting uh, to input. If you change uh, a bar to input, that means they can only input into the bar, can't export. So if we now enable these three grabbers here, just to move some things around, and we disable these backwards here so we don't fill up anymore, uh, you'll see the bar storage starts going down, and usually it would just empty the whole bar now, and it would be completely gone. But now it stops at 50. But these 50 wood are still available up here. We have 159 because I've got some other things going on, but we still have storage available for ourselves to use wood to move things around. So that's the simplest way. It works with one type, it can work with two because you have four slots, so you can have one slot free to move on to other places and another slot free to uh, have just an input setting. And you can filter them to whatever we want to. Nice and simple. But it doesn't work if you want three items or four items in a barn. That becomes a bit more complicated. That requires the use of logic right here i have a very simple logic system set up that keeps 90 wood inside this barn at all times it goes down to 90 it stops if i double click this um because i see the 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 wagon comes along drops off the wood the wood goes down to 90 and the logic stops it now i'll go over this very quickly and then we will remake it over here for those that don't understand it to uh, to follow along so basically the inventory sensor is set to read the uh barn storage and has a filter of wood is then set to the logic, uh, the, the is set to a math block, and the logic is set to process left value. Then the math block, the right value is 90, the left value is processed by the, inv inventor the inventory sensor, and the math function is greater than, so it will check the two, and it will find out that if the left value is greater than 90, it will say true, so it will set a true value to the uh, grabber, and if it's um, equal to or less than, it will set a false value works nice and simple so now i've gone over that for those that understand how these work and just have to to redo thing there let's actually rebuild it over here because it can seem a little bit complicated because there's a lot going on there so you're going to need a barn full of the goods you want uh, an inventory sensor and a math block like so uh, and you're also going to need a grabber which is grabbing the item out of the storage that you have uh, you always need to know how many you want. How many do you want to keep in storage? That's simple. So the way to do this is you take the inventory sensor and they can be placed anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter. They don't have to be right next to the uh, the storage. It's usually easier to have them near the storage so you know what the um, uh, logic is linked to. So I'll take the inventory sensor and right click on the storage you'll see there. Um, it has a plus symbol. Right click, boom, add it to it. It turns blue to say it is reading something. Right now it's reading everything in the barn. It's just taking all the numbers and adding them all up. So you want to filter it to the item you want. So I'm going to do stone here. So if I click the item filter uh, and click stone, boom, there we go, that makes it easier. You may have to click the filter a few times. You see it flickering. Every time this value updates, it, it updates. When you click it first time, it might not happen. You have to click it a couple of times for it to appear. That's just because the state's being updated. The easiest way is to pause the game and then you can click them and do whatever you want to do. Um, it's usually easier to do with logic when the game is paused because then you haven't got to worry about numbers doing random stuff when you're when you're doing things. So now we have our sensor reading the barn. The offset is minus three, minus one. So that's the center of this barn here. And it's filtered to stone, so it's only reading stone. So it's reading 34 and we have 34 in a barn. That's working. Now we have a math block. Now the math block takes a left value and a right value and a function. And whatever the function is, it then outputs the result. So if you have uh, zero, add one, the result's going to be one. That's how it works. That's how it, it, it goes. It's very, very simple to do. So what we want to do is we want to compare what's in the barn with how many we want to keep and output a true or false result depending on that. So change the function from add to greater than. It works with less than as well, but greater than is e easier. If you set it to greater than, and then you choose the number you want to store in the barn. So I've got this barn upgraded once so it can store 100 goods. So I'm going to say I want 
75. I want to keep 75 stone for me, and then anything more than that can be sent off to do whatever you want to do in the workshop, in, in the in your factory. Right now, I'm just going to avoiding, but it can go off and go wherever. So it said 75. So now we need to tell it what the left value is. So you take the inventory center, right click on the math block, and choose process left value. Not set left value. There is a difference here. Uh, the set left value will set the left value to what it wants to do, but it won't actually trigger the math block to do anything. It will just change the numbers in it. Can be useful. You could set a left value, and then you have another sensor set in the right value, and then you have a third one when something triggers to evaluate. And what evaluate means is basically check your math, and if it's true, do the thing. Or if it's false, do the thing. Whatever they want to do. Um, we want to process the value. Process means set the value with what we've given you. So we are giving you a number, which right now is 34. So we're giving you 34. And process that with your with your your logistics, your logic, sorry, not logistics. So boom. And this will then go, that will change that to 34. And the math block will go, I need to process this. So now it's 34. Is it greater than 75? Well, it's no. So the result's going to be no. It's going to be zero. It's going to output zero. So we then want to take this right click on the grabber um, let me move the camera around so that you can actually see this here um, take this, and then right click on the grabber and go set active state and what that means is the active state can either be a one or a zero one being true zero being false so one is on zero is off so the reason we've chosen greater than instead of less than is because if the left value the amount that we have in the bomb is greater than the amount we've set we want to turn the grabber on and we want to get rid of that excess if it's not greater than, it will go zero, so it will turn the grabber off. And that's it. Unpause the game. Boom. It's turned the grabber off because it's reading 33 now because we dropped one. My caravan has dropped them off. 65. It's reading 65. You see the value here, 65. This one here, 65. The next time it drops it off, it's going to go 96. And it's going to go trigger, 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 all the way down until you get to 75 again. And it stops it. Turns it off. And then the caravan will drop off again and it'll do the same again. And it will just repeat and repeat and repeat all the way through. Now, you may be thinking, well, this is annoying because you're turning this grabber on and off and on and off and on and off all the time. It's going on and off and it's really brilliant. When you're dealing with a uh, caravan, it's not so bad because it drops off a large lump and then stops the large lump and stops. If, however, you are dealing with, say, let's go with a magic conveyor belt. Let's connect this one up here with a magic conveyor belt. This is going to be a constant input. Constant input of uh, uh, the planks. So what's going to happen is that it's going to go on and off. So let's let's do the same thing again with planks, shall we? So we'll grab an inventory sensor. We'll grab a math block. We'll set the math block to 50. And set the math function to uh, greater than. Boom. And if the left value is greater than 50, it would be a 1. But because 0 is not greater than 50, it's going 0. So we'll right click on this and go set active state. We will grab the inventory center. We will filter it to planks. We will right click on the barn. And then we'll right click on here and go process left value. Important process left value. Not the, the right value is the one that changes. It's the one that you actually see on the number here. Uh, you could have it processing that and do other things. You, there is logic can be a fantastic thing and do a lot with it. So there's way more than what I'm just showing here. This is the very basics. Just keep an inventory inside the story. So right click, press the left value, and boom, there we go. This is triggered, and this is now gone, hey, um, we're not got 50 here, so don't do anything. But you see this is triggering every time the inventory changes. So whenever a log, a plank, or a stone block, stone goes in here, it's triggering. And now, you see, it's triggering on and off, and on and off, and on and off, um, every go. So it's going 51, 51, 51, 50. It's actually flicking between 50 and 51 because as it inputs, it goes above 50, so it turns it on. It outputs, goes below 50, turns it off. The blue lines are kind of annoying. You can get rid of them two ways. Now, the first way, if you're using uh, a large drop-off, like here with the, uh, the carrot here, um, or the, the, the easier way, is to use a delta block. So let's build a delta block. Oh. A delta block only passes the signal on if it's different to the previous signal so if you keep sending it a zero it won't pass it on 
as soon as it changes to a one it will pass it on so we want to disconnect from our rabbit here and we want to go here and we want to go uh i think it was process yeah process value oh, process value and then we want to go to here and then go set active state and this will process the number through but you see it isn't flashing it flash once there this dropped off and if we go along it'll eventually get down below the 75 mark and boom it fired once the lines are still firing between them all the time the blue, see the blue lines firing between them every every like 10 times a second but it's only firing once across um every every time the value is different so when it changes from a zero to one it fires once then it changes from a one to zero it fires once. now the great thing about this is that you can hide logic underground if you were to grab your logic and go move uh, so i use the tab key there press tab select over the top of it press move and then press g to go underground um oh you can't move you can't do it that way okay so if you select the logic you have to copy it or build it directly underground but you can build logic underground so it's the same thing you go underground uh, we'll build um an inventory center a math block and a delta block and then we'll set these all up oh didn't want that one there uh, so this wants to be filtered with stone and wants to trigger to here process left value this wants to be set as greater than uh, 75 was our value. You want to go to here and want to go process. And then you, we click on this block here. Once we've got it selected, press G to go above ground. Can right click on here and go set active. And then we can just delete these three here. Go back underground, grab the inventory center. Right click on that and there we go. And then that is working underground now. Um, now with the delta block, you may have to uh, trigger it once manually if it's in a different state to what it was as in you might have to turn on the grabber yourself manually once or twice um, <clears throat> because the delta block may be receiving a one signal already and then won't trigger to turn it on so you may just have to manually turn on or off the grabber you can do that by holding control and just clicking it and that's, that's fine over there but you see this is now turning off on and off no logic can't see it can't see these blue lines everywhere because it's underneath on the mining layer you can put logic on any layer you like does not matter any layer you want whatsoever um just remember you have to click the block you want and then press g to come above ground to then right click on whatever you want to do that way around so hiding logic is an option as well and the delta block just means that you're not firing it every single go you're still doing it it is still triggering every go internally it's just not firing across the screen the idea behind this is that sometimes you may have the idea behind the delta block I should say is that sometimes you may have a, a barn that has a storage in it and you want to go to like the other side of the map and go hey um i need more of this thing so can you put it on a train and you don't want your blue line firing across the map um like all that time so Im imagine you know just imagine that you are triggering a train over here somewhere you see you've got this blue line zoom, zoom, zoom. now you could put it underground and you'd hide it but the delta block would basically go it would check it every single time and then go well hey if it's if it's zero so we don't want it and i've sent zero once already i won't trigger it again then as soon as you change the one it will then trigger and it will then just send a single zoom across turn it on and then back again just a visual thing the delta block's very nice for doing that sort of thing um it can be used in other things can be used in many things there are multiple things that are always doing it there so so that's why this makes sense and you see here this is triggering every single time because the vol the numbers going up and down and up and down but but there we go that is how to keep an asset level of inventory in a barn using the new logic system it's very similar to this the old system it's just a lot has now been expanded to uh allow for new and wonderful things so thank you for watching and uh, hopefully this was helpful